So good evening, friends. Uh, this is Ashok. So can you all see my screen and hear me clearly? Yes? Is my voice clearly audible? Awesome. Okay. Thank you, friends. So uh, just a quick introduction about myself before we uh, get into the webinar. Uh, my name is Ashok, and I have 20 plus years of experience in, in the field of information technology. The last three and a half years, I've been extensively on uh, business analytics and uh, big data, big data related things I've been doing. And uh, I've done uh, three, four projects in this, primarily in the area of uh, big data right from cleaning up the uh, data preparation, data transformation, and uh, data analytics using R. So I come from this background. So, and I'm very, very happy to be part of this webinar. And uh, uh, in the next one hour or so, I look forward to spend the time with you and you know, collectively uh, we should uh, all strive to learn in this uh, excellent platform. So. Thanks, friends. So let's, without further ado, I, I just want to get started on this webinar. So thanks for coming. So let's get started. So before, uh, I just want to begin with a trivia. What is data visualization, right? What's your opinion about data visualization? I mean, we have a pretty attractive title if you look at the uh, you know deck. It says R in visualization, match made in heaven, right? Of course, we try to emphasize that you know R is uh, is a fantastic tool uh, to do visualization. It it has got great interface and fantastic tool, and it's a statistical uh, statistical tool. End of the day, but it is it provides very good graphics, so it, it's a fantastic tool overall. And uh, of course, it has its rivals in uh, SAS and uh, uh, you know uh, SPMM. You know there are few other uh, tools available, but you know R is definitely leading the pack here. So uh, can you all tell me what according to you is visualization? Why do we need visualization? Can I ask you this question? Uh, okay, I'm just uh, reading a list of responses which I'm seeing straight on this. So friends, don't shy away, just, just respond, right? Uh, no issues at all. Better clarity of data, less time consuming, Better representation, it's a kind of report. Better represent the data, right? There are a lot of versions coming up now. I'll just pause for another few seconds to present the insights to business, okay? Better understanding the data, okay? So thanks, friends. Yeah, this is good enough. You know, I just thought I'll uh, get the whole thing moving, right? So uh, I think let me give you a pretty old uh, adage, right? We all, okay, let, let me read out a few more. Collate large data sets into one report. Visualization helps to infer logical reasoning. Meaning out of data via insightful, informative, visual cues. Fantastic. Okay, I was about to tell this old adage, right? Ranjan has told that. A picture is worth a thousand words, right? We all know this. It's a pretty old uh, school of thought, but still holds good even today, right? Something visual, right? It really helps, correct? So if I'm going to give some statistical algorithm, right? I'm going to get the regression report, right? I perform some re linear regression, okay, using R. Then I take it to the shareholders meeting, or you know, I take it to my senior execs, right? Where my uh, the leadership, uh, uh, let's say it's a it's a stakeholder meeting is happening, right? I just tell them, okay, here is the graph, here is the you know, here is the data. It may not really fly well, right? You need to talk the language of the business, not the technology, correct? So something which is in the visual medium, it's going to mean a lot there, right? So you, you can actually talk sense there. It's not that you know we cannot talk the data, but the people who do not come from the statistics background and all that, they may not be able to uh, infer anything out of this, right? So it is better to talk you know the business language and you know we, we can represent that when R has got extensive uh, facility for visualization, why not we use that, correct? Okay, so um, what is it used for? I just, 
what is it used for? Effective communication of information, right? Fine. And we need to clarify integrity, you know, one is the data, in, you know, if there is, a, you know, we need to provide the clarity, correct? Clarity is one aspect. Stimulate viewer engagement, okay? Ravi says, my voice is not clear. Anybody facing audio issues, friends? Is my, is audio okay to everybody? All right. Okay. Okay, thanks, thanks. I think Ravi and a few others, I just want to say, you know, if there is any, I mean there is an echo. Okay, sure. So let me know if there is any echo or any audio issues, but nevertheless, you know, I just want to move on. Voice is breaking. Uh, let me move the, okay. Is it better now? Talking a bit louder and move the microphone closer to my, all right. Thank you, friends. So it also, it is very insightful and we focus on something which is very, very effective, right? We are focusing on the effectiveness, correct? So I just want to ask you one thing. Suppose you are given two data sets, right? Two data sets that has identical value, correct? I, I'm going to show you, you know, friends, uh, this is the deck. I will get into the R console shortly, correct? So because that, that's where I want to spend the maximum amount of time today. Right? So you are given two data sets, for example, fine, that has got very, very identical value. You know those finum values, right? For you have this median and, uh, you know, 75th percentile, 25th percentile, the statistics part of it, right? If the finum variables, you know, finum values rather, if they are all the same, let's assume that way, correct? And, and even the correlation, right? Two data sets, the correlation, everything is the same, correct? So, can we conclude the data sets are similar? That's my question to you. Can we conclude that or no? No, okay. Yes, no, no. I, I, okay. All right, there is a mixed response. So, let's, Let's first, you know, before I get to the R studio, this is what I want to cover, friends, today. Uh, you know, in this one hour, I'll try to cover as much as possible. Video not available. Uh, Surabhi, I mean, are you talking about this deck? You're talking about the presentation deck? All right. So, friends, let me take up the questions towards the end except the questions which I am going to ask you, right? So I'll take up the questions towards the end so that it will help me to cover as much as possible. Fine. I'll, I'll try to cover as much as possible here. Okay. So um, the agenda, if you look at it, basic understanding of data visualization as a field, basic advanced graphics, change colors or use, them, use custom palettes, graphical parameters, basics of grammar of graphics, yeah, some of this, uh, you know, what are the basic things and all that. Spatial, you know, we may not uh, touch on that because uh, we have put that, but, you know, it, time, if time permits, I'll talk about that, friends. Yeah? Okay. So, what is data visualization? You know, I, I just want to touch upon this before I get to the R studio. Study of the visual representation of data, more than pretty graphs because it's going to be a lot more insightful give insights, help decision making accurate and truthful. You know, we cannot give something, you know, which is uh, uh, just out of the whack, correct? So, statistics, why data visualization is a phrase describing the persuasive power of numbers, particularly, particularly the use of statistics to bolster weak argument, correct? So, uh, I mean, this is uh, straightforward. So, data visualization, if you look at this, right, if I'm going to take a report like this, correct, it's very, very hard to present the facts, uh, leave alone this part, right, it's, it's even very hard to figure out what is exactly happening here, right, so that's going to be challenging, correct? So, before I get to this slide, I, I want to take you through this uh, part, friends, right, so this is what I was telling, there are, okay, I'm, 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 I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you this uh, 
data set, correct? If you look at it, ANSCOM is one of the data set, right? If you take a look, minimum value, first, this is the median, right? This is the third quadrant and this is the maximum. This is the phi, phi sum, what I was telling, phi num values, correct? This is the phi num values, right? I, I can get the summary and get the phi num values here. Fine. If I take a look at ANSCOM, right? If I take a summary of this, right? I'm getting the values. This is the minimum. This is the first quartile. Uh, this is the this is the basically the 25th percentile, and this is my median. This is my mean. This is the 75th one, and this is the maximum. Correct? So if I look at this summary, y1, I just take y1. If you look at it, right, it's not much of difference between x1 and y1, right? It, it looks pretty similar. It looks pretty similar. And if I want to take a correlation of that, similarly I can do for x2 and I can do for y2 as well, correct? I can do for y2 as well. If I try to see the correlation here, right, if I try to see the correlation, you see this, it's pretty high. So what does this indicate, friends? 0.81. What does this indicate? Any any takers here for this question? Strongly correlated, correct? Strongly correlated. 81%. Fantastic. Correct? So it's it's a very positive correlation, correct? So if I do this, if I if I uh, similarly, if I do this, it's again 81%, correct? So, but if I try to actually plot this, right, this is where you're going to see the difference, right? Let's say that, you know, I want to uh, plot this in this designated area, correct? If I see this plot, you can actually see, does this look similar, friends, X1 and X2 here? X1, X2, you saw the, you know, it looked very similar, right? X1, Y1 and all that. But see, one thing is, the values appear quite random over here, fine. And the other one looks like a hyperbola, right? This looks like a hyperbola, right? My point is, if you're, although X1, Y1 and X2, Y2 have a very, very similar correlation, correct? Summary values and everything, just going by the summary fun function could be highly deceptive, right? Could be highly deceptive. So data visualization, it gives a different picture and it's far more intuitive. Are you all clear, friends? Are you clear? So in, in other words, it is very essential. It has become a mandatory step for someone to, you know, have this visualization because even if you do the big data analytics, any, any kind of analytics today you talk about, we, the, one of the last stages in the whole thing is the visualization. So we take it till that point, right? So analytics means taking all the way till, you know, right from the data preparation, data cleansing and all those things, all the way till visualization, okay? So uh, I, I hope you're all clear with what I mentioned. So let, let's just move on to the second part, right? Let's move on to the second part. Okay, this is something, you know, again, uh, if you look at this, empty cars is one of the data sets, correct? One of the data sets and here the red, you, you see, you know, it has got various uh, uh, attributes here, right? As part of the empty cars. But if you look at this, red presents a negative correlation, whereas the blue presents a positive correlation, correct? So this is the Corgram library is something you know that helps to interpret the correlation with advanced option that makes it easy to interpret correct so i'm going to i'm i'm just going to load this friends in r i'm going to load this so let me simply do this okay look at this let me zoom this okay this is what i have right this is what i have let me zoom this Okay, now this is empty cars is my uh, uh, data set here, fine. So I want to ask this team, you know, uh, the, the group here, right? 
So I have a bunch of things. So one of the important attribute of an, anal of an analyst or someone who is going to do, right, who is going to do this, right, because one of the key things one has to possess is to analyze the data, correct? Data analysis means you need to spot out the outliers, you need to spot out where the data is going wrong, right? You need to spot out, you know, where the data can be fixed because data preparation, data analysis, data, even before you come into that data cleansing, all those things, it's one of the key aspects which is there in your data science, correct? So, um, I want to ask you in general, what can you make out? I mean, can you provide some insights? Because, you know, we, we have been uh, telling a lot of things about this is insightful, correct? So, I, I told you, red is negative correlation and blue is positive correlation, fine? Stronger shade means stronger correlation. For example, this is a stronger shade compared to this, right? And lighter shade means weaker correlation, negative uh, weak negative correlation, right? Something something like this, correct? So friends, this is definitely intuitive. So can you tell me from this diagram, right, which two variables have the weakest negative correlation? Can you tell me? Just take a closer look at the, you know, this diagram. HP gear, look at this friends, this is a very weak correlation, right? HP gear, exactly, yes? And uh, what about WD, weight and uh, QSEC, correct? Even this is weak, I mean there are weaker ones too, yeah? What about uh, strong, strong positive correlation, friends? Strong positive correlation? This is clearly coming out, right? Cycle this Correct? Exactly. A lot of people are saying that. And what about uh, this one? Disp and weight. Correct? These are all uh, positive correlation, right? Very strong. So this is definitely useful when you are presenting to an audience who do not have statistical background or otherwise. Otherwise you can use things like scatter plot and all that, right? If, if you are coming from, uh, you know, that background. So important point to remember in visualization, R has a lot of fancy things to offer. So we should also present, we should avoid presenting something that is not understandable overall, right? Correct? So uh, thanks friends, I hope you found this to be a good start. So let's move on. I just want to close this guy, just a second. Let's move on. So I, I just want to see what else is coming here basic graphics, basic graphs here, pie chart, never use them, okay? Scatter plot, always use them. Line graph, linear trend, bar graphs, when are, when are they better than line graphs, right? Sunflower plot, rut plot, density plot, histograms, box, plot, box plots. So all these are various things available. So friends, you know, instead of showing it here, I will show it directly in the R Studio, but you know, I just want to skim through this deck um, just a minute, so let's, let's go to the R, fine, straight away, just give me a minute, see whether I have, just a second. So let's try. Okay, uh, before that, let me take a look at the question window, question window, yeah, and somebody is asking, R is a Linux based, no, I'm, I'm running uh, uh, Praveen, I'm running R in Windows right now, it has got Mac and other versions as well. So, uh, Vika says, what is the difference between reporting tool like Tableau, correct, uh, Vika completely agreed, Tableau also has fantastic graphs, I've used it personally. So it has got fantastic graphs, but it's not, uh, you know, open source, correct? It is not open source, R is, correct? Even SAS is not open source for, for, for the people who are following this, right? SAS is not open source either, correct? So let me go here. That's the, oh, that's the only difference because says 
that's one of the major differences yes r is free guys okay because says tableau also has tableau public okay i i'm not too sure about that uh that is free is it okay um i'm not too sure because but you know uh, but r is completely open source and i don't know tableau is great for graphics it has got fantastic visuals uh, visualization but the level of statistical analysis what we what you can do in r i i'm not sure whether tableau provides that tableau has very cool graphics and all that cannot be obtained in tableau ranjan says i mean he should said nail straight away right it doesn't have the statistical support correct right Tableau public is free but no data security. Correct. That's right. That's right, friends. Thanks. Thanks for giving the answers as well. Yeah. So I'm I'm taking another data set called you know empty cars. Fine. So must. So if I look at this simple scatter plot, well, let's try this. Right. Let Let's try this simple scatter plot. Right. So this is the one which we saw just now, right? Empty cars. We saw the relation. See how things are mapped, right? How things are mapped. Correct? So this is how it looks. And we can also, uh, okay, there is a question, friends. Just give me a minute. Is it easy to integrate R with other platforms like Java? Um, you can, R is, uh, friends, R is uh, easy to integrate. I'm not sure about uh, see the way I have used, I'll tell you because I have done analysis using you know a Java program. You know I, I've done big data, all those things, analytics, right? I pulled the data, then I got into the R, right? I did some price, you know, uh, measured the demand elasticity of various products, correct? Of the various products, then using some regression techniques, then put the data onto you know, I I was able to write the data directly, store the data onto Hadoop. I can I can read the data and write and all those things using R. That's possible, correct? Uh, yes, we have a package R Java. It might be that's right, Ranjan. Yeah. So uh, well, I didn't directly connect, but where Ranjan is correct, there is a R Java package, correct? So you can use that. And a lot of people are also using uh, Python. Can R be integrated with MATLAB? Not so sure. Uh, I've not used MATLAB, but R can be integrated with, uh, you know, SAS. R can be integrated with SAS. So they have got connectors for even SAS. So MATLAB, probably yes, Surabhi, because a lot of these guys are, you know, have their different vendors are giving uh, their own flavors of R. So it is becoming more and, you know, people are don't want to, work in silo, so they are providing different uh, 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 ways to connect with rival products including SaaS, right? So that's the way the world is going. So I'm, I'm sure they may have connectivity. Uh, they may have an integration factor here, right? Now let's try this, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try this uh, 3D part, right? I'll try the 3D part. Let's see how this looks like, right? So uh, if you look at this, the 3D part, right? This is a you know 3D. This is a library. We are using three variables: weight, and uh, this is the miles per gallon and disp. We draw. You can see this weight on the x-axis and uh, miles per gallon on the y-axis, and disp is another parameter, right? So that is on the z-axis. Okay, correct. So can someone um, help interpret this plot. Can someone help interpret this? This one. Take a look at it. Lower the weight. Okay. Okay. Lower the weight, higher the miles per gallon. Okay, Ashutosh says that. Anybody else, friends? More the weight, less. Okay, it's just the opposite. All right.
Okay. So uh, the other option, you know, we can also draw something called a best fit line, right? So that gives. So if this is what I've done earlier, this is what was, you know, if you any outliers here, can you spot it out, friends? There are no outliers as well as such. But if you draw a best fit line, right, it becomes a little easier to uh, interpret here, right? It becomes a little easier because that's what we try to do. We draw a best fit line so that it becomes a little more easier. Correct. There are no outliers, Ranjan, as such. This data set is fairly clean. So if I do just a minute, I'm, I'm just using another, CEPL is another, uh, IRIS is a data set. Let me try this. I'm just plotting this, iris, and just give me a minute, I just want to see what else, okay, so this is a mere scatter plot, and uh, look at this, bar plot. So we can actually in the uh, in the scenario, actual scenario, we can have different plots. We collectively seek recommendation and stick to a particular uh, particular plot, whichever. See, because there are range of uh, plots that are available in R, right? So you can do a horizontal plot, you can do a line chart, you can do you know do a scatter plot. So by default. What R does, right? R understands and renders the plot based on the type of the data. Any thumb rule, thumb rule, Ranjan, you know, it purely depends on the business uh, scenario, right? So we can have different plots. How it typically happens in an organization, Ranjan, it's like, you know, we all, you know, uh, most of the analysts, right? They may have, you know, something which is closer to their business needs. I'm giving a very generic one, but th this is a reality I'm telling you because we all try to see which is which comes closer, something you know which can visually explain what they are up to, right? Then that means, uh, you know, they they go over the consensus, you know, what what looks better for them, correct? So that's how it is uh, typically done, and. Uh, Look at this pie table. This is again, you know, uh, I'm taking a species. These two, three are uh, different species of uh, flowers, right? This is a data set. Setosa is one thing. So friends, can you all, am I audible now? I'm hearing some noise in the background. Hello. Can hear you well. There is a noise coming out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I hope the noise goes off. Sure. I'll I'll continue. Correct. So, this setosa. I mean, sorry. This this particular part, right? If I zoom it, this is a typical pie chart, right? It's a pie chart. So, uh, where do we generally use pie chart, friends? Any guesses here? Where do we generally use? To show percentage distribution, okay? All right. And uh, see the species here, dimensions are less, exactly. Uh, number of variables are low. Absolutely correct, right? Limited distribution of percentages. See, I cannot have 20 different slices of pie, right? That doesn't look good. Diagrammatically and also visually, that doesn't make sense, right? So, species here, species is the one, you know, which I'm trying to portray here, is a categorical variable, right? That's not a numerical one. That has got setosa, virginica, and verticular, versicolor, correct? Three things, three categories are there. This generates occurrences of different species, correct? So, if I look at this, it, I, I, as you all rightly pointed out, right? I do not have, I do not get into the pie chart if the values are, if there are too many values, it works best 
when it works with like five labels or less than that, right? Less observations overall. Otherwise, the slicing of the data will be too hard to comprehend, correct? Otherwise, it will be too cluttered. Are you all with me, friends, so far? This is one thing. Yeah, thank you. Let's go a little more further. Let's look at uh, histogram here. Let me zoom this. Okay. So this actually creates 20 buckets in the x-axis, right? That's what I gave here, correct? Uh, just a second. Let me come back here. I gave breaks is 20 buckets, correct? And 20 buckets in the x-axis. So, so far, we have seen different plots, histogra histograms and all. Right, so we have a lot of options. It's important to note which one is actually required. So, friends, this is like, you know, histogram signifies the frequency here, right? It gives the frequency distribution, correct? Let me give the density plot. Just a second, let me... Sorry, friends, just a second. Okay, let me do a box plot. This gives you a more insightful one. Okay. When the brakes will be used and for what? When the brakes will be used? Shanta, I'm coming to the question. I'll, I'll come to the question. So friends, can you all, you know, looking at the box plot, right, looking at the box plot, can, if you are familiar, if you are familiar with this, right, do you know what are these things? What is this dark line and what are these things, this line at the bottom, line at the top, yeah? So Ranjan is able to say, okay, how about others? Are you all familiar with this? This is the maximum value, this is the minimum value. Right? Minimum value, maximum value, here is the mean, median, this is the finum, exactly, correct, correct? So, so this is one way of looking at the plot, correct? So if you look at the density plot, right, just now we were seeing that. Density plot, if you look at it, let me zoom this, let me zoom this. So here we have the probability coming in the x-axis, correct? Coming in the x-axis and uh, 6 has the highest probability if you see. So what is the area appearing under the curve, friends? What is the area appearing under the curve? Can you all tell me? Awesome. Uh, friends, can you just just hang on for a second? Let me just fix this problem. It's too much of noise at my end. Just a minute. Just bear with me. I'm going to mute you for just one minute. Okay, uh, friends, uh, I think let's continue. I think I'm not getting the number. So it is one. Ranjan has told the right answer. So let's just move on from here. So I want to get to a few more things here. Let's say I'm going to give, uh, you know, I'm going to get into the customization aspect, right, of uh, we have a, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, you know, this one is going to divide the plot area by three rows and two columns, whatever I'm putting it here, and there are, uh, we have six plots all together. It's going to come uh, together, correct? So I am using heat color, 
right? I'm using different heat colors here, which is nothing but the color palette, correct? So it uses 10 different, in this case, right? There are 10 different colors. Let's look at examples here, right? So if I say this, right? If I say this, look at this. This is how it looks, right? Let's look at a uh, few more. Okay, L look at few more. I it has the variation of all this. This uses something called color terrain, right? And this is color topo. Look at the, uh, uh, you know, the colors, right? It has a different variation here. And this is again another one. This is the another one. This is the another one. Okay. Now, I want to try change the heat colors and show you the difference here. Correct? So, instead of saying 10, right, I'm, I'm going to use, uh, you know, here the heat colors, number of heat colors that are used is 10. In this case, it is 7. Again, here it is 7, 8, 10, 8 and all that. See, if I use only 5, you will actually see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the number, you know, the color gets repeated, right? The color gets repeated, correct? So, uh, again, if I use this, this one, this is the difference I want to point out to you. If I put everything together, I'm trying to see how would it look. Just a second. Okay. Let me zoom this and show you difference. This is a rainbow. So, do you, uh, just a fundamental question to this, uh, to this crowd, right? Do you find these colors insightful? Do you find this, uh, I mean, I know it is very colorful because I use uh, rainbow, right? So do you find this? Because, you know, we can, I, I told you how we can change the color, right? The color, uh, what to say, the heat color, right? The heat color, I used a different palette and showed you, correct? So this is very colorful. You can change the colors and run it again. You know, I can use any combination there, correct? So I can use a 5 and I can use a 10, you know, how many number of heat colors I want to do. I can use right so the color scheme is basically getting changed correct color scheme is getting changed now do you what is the uh, I mean do you, do you find this insightful friends that's what I wanted to know no visual cues okay visual I guess not in this case just uh, you know because I know this is one of the let let me give you one other thing how about this how about this, friends? How about Vishal here? Not very pleasing. Okay. Let me, you know, because uh, what about this? Sorry. Let me execute this. Correct? So let me zoom this, friends. Okay, now you tell me, here is my heat color 10, correct? This is my terrain color, this is topo, this is CM color, okay? And uh, this has got a different heat color here, okay? And this has got rainbow. Now, if you were the analyst, right, you are the person, which one would you pick? One with more colors, terrain, heat colors, terrain colors, okay? A lot of people are saying, okay, one thing that is clearly coming out from this class, right, from, from this uh, team of people is like, you know, nobody is choosing uh, topo because it's very bright. Uh, there are few takers for rainbow, but generally not, correct? And nobody is choosing this as well, right? Uh, yeah, there are few takers. 
uh, colors make any difference in this case? Uh, actually, Ranjan, I'll, I'll come to that shortly. So we are, you know, especially when you are considering the colors, it is very essential that, you know, the color combinations are carefully chosen, otherwise it's going to get into a huge, uh, you know, it has to be visually appealing because it's a visual medium, correct? So it has to be visually appealing and enriching as well. So uh, let me execute something else and show you. Important for first appearance, why is Topo not good? Shekant is asked. No, Topo, you know, it is too bright, uh, Shekant, right? Correct? So, Topo has got too many color combinations. See, it looks colorful, that's all, right? It looks very colorful, but but is this the one which you want to consider? It looks too, uh, what to say, too gaudy here, right? We can, different color, but for the same value, we can have definitely uh, SIF, correct? So, that's what we are, I'm trying to say here. There are different representation of different colors here, correct? So, look at this, terrain colors. This looks definitely better than this because you know this red and all those things right people wouldn't you know you don't want to see such a dark color coming in the presentation and all that correct that's right so and uh, again this looks different this looks too colorful again very jazzy this is you know a lot of people have you know uh, have expressed this as one of the choices and uh, this as well Okay. Correct? Okay. So what, I, I'm not done with my point yet. What is the takeaway for analyst, Asif? The takeaway, I'll, I'll come to that, Asif. I'll come to that very shortly. Right? I'll show you something, some other library. There are various libraries to portray the colors. Correct? So let's try to change the, you know, let's see some, some other uh, package I'm going to use. Color Brewer. Correct? So I'll take this. And uh, okay, done. Now tell me, friends. Now tell me what is your choice. I'll I'll come to the what should be your, what should be the takeaway for an analyst from the visual aspect. So can you all tell me? Gray greens, okay? That is the, I, I think most of you are saying that, right? Now, now you understand, correct? Gray and the greens. Now tell me, friends, okay, that's apparently the correct choice. Why would you pick for gray and greens? Just because it is mild or what is the rationale behind the selection? The pattern, the gradient, right? The variation is clearly visible, not frustrating, exactly easy to read, correct? Sequence, right? There are a lot of things coming out, right? Gradient, the color is easy to read, shows diminishing values, correct? Readability. Uh, I think you already know what I should, what I was trying to say. See, as a rule of thumb, friends, uh, you know, there is, nobody can, you know, really say that, you know, you can use this color and all that. As a rule of thumb, we should avoid dark shades or the ones that are quite gaudy, right? We are going to avoid that. Next thing, visualization actually looks great in light shades and more professional as well, right? We know this too. And the this one, right, if you look at this, it looks great, uh, especially the set, uh, you know, uh, this one, it looks very loud, right? Set 13 looks very loud. Ideally, when you're presenting these charts to the leadership or you know any, any important meeting it is important to have the choice of colors that shows the degree of professionalism you will choose one parent color right one parent color could be anything right? it can be green or it can be uh, black anything the rest of the colors will have the shades of these colors correct friends the rest of them will have shades of these colors correct that that makes it really cool right in the color brewer library you all said it's going to be, you know, the gray shade on this, right? So my point is like, you know, 
there are you know you uh, when i mention you know this was this was when you know the 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 whole thing got snapped right you should choose a parent color the other color should be the shades of that color right and 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 i saw a couple of questions like you know if there is a danger or anything right we should choose red correct i mean those things you know you need to be aware of what you are choosing so that's quite important correct so that's very very important like you know if you are choosing danger you know you know what to choose and you know you you have to be very clear on what you are choosing and all that same time you also need to be because we are talking from the global perspective you also need to be very clear with what you are uh, you know sometimes the red here in india means you know uh, in if you are talking about that presentation in middle east or you know in europe things may uh, completely uh, you know they have a different perspective right so you need to be aware of the culture right coming back to the coming to the colors right you need to know the culture as well you know and what represents what and all that so you need to be very conscious about those things correct so uh, i i'm can we integrate high chart with r uh, i've not used uh, tarun high chart but high chart has got fantastic graphics i've used high chart with uh, you know uh, i've not used it with r but i've used it with uh, with java with dot net you know those kind of things right you can do that but maybe it is possible i'm i'm not seen that uh, you know high chart with r you know you have various variants right today uh, tarun like you have high charts you have zoom charts there's so many things available and they all can connect to your uh, uh, zoom charts in fact it can connect to different data sources it can connect to hadoop it can connect to uh, mongo you know different data sources it can connect to so there is another question if the graph is printed black and white one color will be shaded will be good and not multi colors uh, correct that's right kalinga yeah so generally you know we take a you know this one it gives a very progressive outlook starting from white and you know it's like a, almost like a gray shade and now the gray is getting thicker and thicker all the way till black and this also gives a very professional touch right starting all the way from you know how it came to the dark gray so you are able to clearly make out what is exactly happening here right so uh, so you you all get what i said so let me just show one last thing friends i think there are a lot of things which we have covered here whatever is mentioned here right basic graphs histogram west seeker and all that right so i'll i'll even with no no asif says what is a okay let me go back asif asif my point is no let me load it again asif one one last time sure so my point asif thing is having different colors for same value no it is not going to be different colors right i mean same value what i'm saying is this is different from this this is different from this so it is going to give a uh, you know i can have variance color variance but my parent color if i'm going to have even if it is red right if i'm going to have shades of red for the other colors it it will look lot more professional and insightful compared to these kind of things right look at this this looks like you know it's going to come and hit someone right this is like way too dark and even this one so this one is quite pleasing because you know you just seeing the seeing the shades of green as if does it make sense to you of course i mean you are asking which one represents what you know i have not defined the you know uh, this is my x axis this is my y axis right i i have done that but at the same time you can put put your own values there are other libraries you can use as well you can put what is what and all that you are you are going to put those what is axis values right clearly so that way it is going to that way it's going to be more uh, intuitive and more uh, you know you need to put what is the label and all that you are probably looking for the label but label you can always mention that clearly where which should come where and all that correct okay we also have 3d chart as package that's right in fact friends how many of you have heard about there is a package called shiny have you all heard about it
okay yes no ranjan says yes so if you just type shiny.rstudio right like for example right if i simply say you know it, it's a, it's basically a r package right so shiny r shiny r is actually a package in r it's very powerful and very very popular as well because it provides a lot of cool features and visualization correct more importantly you know it is free i mean anything free will attract people it is good for a demo dashboard you know as well as for a end product as well you know it's it's good for those things so you assume you have completed a visualization pro project Let, let's assume it that way right you want to give an interactive interface to the to your to your prospective clients or your customers right or even your leadership your senior leadership you just want them to play around with what you've done if you're you know you can you can just give them like you know uh, you can give them the shiny interface right you can they can simply play around with that so it's a, it's a specialization by itself when you want to share it with your friends or you know for, for any community you can simply provide the IP address after the development is done you can just give it a shot right you can type shiny.rstudio.com right you can give it a shot at your end whenever uh, you know you find time fine so you can it's a, it's a kind of interactive dashboard, uh, Tharun, correct. A lot of things are there in the shiny part. Just give it a shot. So meanwhile, I, I want to finish one last thing, you know, because I, I just thought, you know, there was a break. So I really, so let, let me take you through the spatial uh, analysis. So there is a, uh, just before that, I'll just... Uh, Just a second, friends. I want to use the library raster. Yeah. And whenever you want to present the data in a map format, right, anything which is in a very geographical format, right, it becomes, you know, especially when you're showing it in uh, a, a, as a global thing, you know, in a map-like format, right, because these things are becoming more essential in, these, uh, in today's world. Right, so I can give something like you know uh, uh, to to get the data function to find the altitude. Right, I can do something like uh, you know uh, get data. I can give just me a minute. Uh, I can say let's say country. Just a second. is equal to India. Okay. So now if I do a, you know, alt. What's happening? Just a minute. Okay, raster layer is coming something. So I, I want to provide information if I want to do what is in the alt, right? I'm looking at altitude, correct? So it gives me some four slots and all that. So I just want to plot it. Uh, just give me one second, friends. Just want to plot it. Um, let's put a one comma one. Yes, it has come in now. So just look at this. Correct. So see the green one provides the high altitude, right? The green one provides the high altitude. The red or lesser shade, right? It gives the lesser altitude. It just uh, you know the way you know because the altim the altitude scale is right at the right hand side. Correct. So if I want to give you know go to the state. Right. If I want to go to the state, I, I can go a step further. Uh, I can go even further, just a minute. So I can say something like, uh, hmm, sorry.
city wise city with population yes so i can go to different levels uh, tarun that's right countries india yeah just a minute and uh, I just want to print the, okay, Taluk, you know, it says what are all the things available, Chhattisgarh, right? So I, I can uh, put it as a table. Look at this list of states, right? And uh, So I want to give this I just want to tape our our prime minister's area. Okay. What is, sorry, name one, it should be comma, sorry. Subset of this. Okay, I have. Can anyone help me here? Why is there a syntax error? Gujarat, sorry. That doesn't matter. I can give any name here. So that's a variable. Subset of this and this is Gujarat. This is all I'm saying. It says unexpected. Okay. The, okay. So friends, I, I think I'll, uh, I'm not getting into this. Adobe Analytics, we can visualizations are created using SAS, Tableau, Asif is asking by any chance. Can you use this? Okay. Or double equal to? I'll try. Okay. Thank you. Oh, there is a double equal to right there. Thanks. Thanks, Shanta. Uh, let me try this. Gujarat. Okay, look at this, friends. Okay. I can go to, you know, I can go to different levels, go to the cities as Tarun asked me a while back, right? So I can make it, uh, you know, something which is uh, from the geographical point of view, I can make it a lot more insightful. Like, and, and I can, you know, it's just not, I, I'm just showing you India, there are so many, uh, you know, I can take all the 190 countries also, right? I, I can, similarly, there are, if I do some other country, right, uh, you know, let it be US, Canada, I can do anything here. It's, it's quite good that way, you know, it's uh, for spatial analysis, which is a very specialized field by itself. What we are seeing is, you know, we just scratched the surface here. So there are so many things here. Most, see, there are, this technique is especially applied, you know, spatial analysis to structure, you know, at, at a human scale, especially in the analysis of geographic data. So complex issues arise in uh, this kind of analysis, many of which are, you know, uh, clearly not defined or completely resolved, but form the basis for current research. So you can do a lot of things in this, a lot of possibilities. So, uh, Freds, I think I pretty much, whatever I plan to cover, sorry about the technical glitch and the interruption that really uh, uh, messed up our, you know, our use, our smooth session otherwise. Any useful link where we can get information on spatial analysis? Shanta, actually, uh, I can tell you that, you know, you can, uh, I mean, you, you can find the help most of the help, uh, I would recommend you to get it from the R itself. From the R itself, just 
if you already have the R Studio up and running, correct? So you can simply uh, use that. You know, you can just uh, put a. I mean, you can use the help on that. I think that is the best thing I use. Then you know, you can always Google it. You know, for any kind of because our community, as you all know, it is not. You know, it is quite a very uh, powerful community as such. Right? It is patronized by different. Uh, several people in the community so it's it's you can you can definitely find help shanta if if you don't find it in our studio most likely you will otherwise you can always go to that yeah so any questions friends uh, any questions you have in whatever we covered so i didn't even go to the deck much because i i thought you know this is where we should be spending more time can we create dashboard in r like in tableau absolutely mohammed you can See, Mohammed, what I want to convey here is uh, Tableau. Tableau is like you know, it is a very very rich visual interface. No doubt about that. Correct? See, it is more. Uh, you know, I would say if you people who use Tableau, because uh, one of my previous organization, they were also using Tableau, but they used R for statistical analysis and to enrich some of the graphics. Right? They took it to Tableau as the final uh, you know visual uh, source for them to show the final visuals, uh, visualization done, they used Tableau towards the end, correct? But whatever visual visualization which you saw in R, you know, it is quite fascinating. Uh, definitely Tableau, you know, if you tell me from the visualization because I have seen Tableau as well, I've used it. So I can say that both of them are, you know, quite good and, you know, R is more expansive meaning it can also do statistical analysis and you can link it up to the visualization like like some of the samples what we have seen there are so many other graphs you have and even for the color brewer is one of the libraries I showed there are so many things you can do customization yes uh, Ranjan yeah so many things you can do you can do so many plots so many graphs so many you know histograms all that's all sorts of things you can do correct and and it's open source that's the best part and Tableau, you know, you can't do all this statistical part, you know. And some people, you know, they use Python to do the regression and all that. That's see, if there is a competition for in the area of statistics, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, Python and uh, what to say, uh, SAS, right? SAS is again not open source, but SAS has got fantastic support and all that. It can do pretty much who are, what R can do, but I would say R is open source, you know, that has the charm, and you know, in the overall race. R is definitely ahead and it's going to because it is taught in most of the universities because most of the guys you know come from the you know people who opt for engineering you know they definitely will study statistics and you know R is uh, used then and there and most of them are familiar with R right so even in this team uh, in this uh, uh, group of learners I'm finding a lot of people are already familiar Maybe some of you are working in that, but nevertheless, I'm saying a lot of people are familiar with R, so that is a welcome uh, step, correct? So, any uh, any other question, friends? I, I think we are like 10:21 uh, because of the technical glitch. I think we went over uh, the time. Uh, just a quick. Customizing graphs, you can do customizing. You can do, you can give different colors and all that, right? You can give different colors. Box plot. I can choose a. If I give background as yellow, we can do. This is what we saw. Color brewer and all that, right? Advanced graphs. You can do. Advanced graphics. Correct. Do you know Haplo groups? Praveen, you want to mention that. What is that? Okay, Praveen says, please make a class on that. Okay, sure, Praveen. If we, uh, yeah, definitely, I'll keep Edureka posted on this. Haplogroups. Is it possible to export charts, PDF? Yes, you can store it, uh, Kalinga. You can do that. You can do that. Any other questions, friends? With snapshot data, I want to make haplogroups. Uh, sure, Praveen, I'll I'll keep that uh, you know uh, 
I don't have much of insight about what you're asking, but uh, I'll, I'll probably let Edureka know this. Sure. Okay. All right. Thanks. So, friends, uh, can you share the deck, Kalinga? Sure, uh, Kalinga. Not a. I, I think you may want to check with Edureka because uh, uh, I'm just using the deck as well. So, they are the persons to answer this question. So, uh, I think. Uh, Definitely, you, you you would like to check with them, uh, Kalinga. Yeah, please check with them on this. Uh, good night, friends. And uh, again, sorry about the technical glitch. You know that really uh, gave a kind of uh, you know it took the flow, uh, stopped the flow briefly. So good that we could resume. So glad about that. So friends, thank you so much. Thanks for being very attentive. And uh, I request one last thing before you drop off. Uh, for any email ID, any questions, friends, you can. Write to the Edureka support, you know, because I don't want to be a you know bottleneck in anything, right? Because what is your priority? I may not be looking at, may not be knowing your priority, right? So please write to Edureka support. They they are more than happy to help you here. Plus, I also have one last thing. Please provide your feedback when I close the session. I want you to provide the feedback, right? So be very very candid in your thoughts and all those things. So it it's going to help us uh, really help, uh, you know. Uh, refine the course content or be it anything right it's going to help us and uh, you know in a long way thank you so much thanks friends